Uh, joining us now from ESPN uh, is um, you know one of the best. He was one of the best on the gridiron, playing at Notre Dame as an All American, and and also in the National Football League. For a lot of you Dallas Cowboy fans out there, you didn't like him when he was a Philadelphia Eagle, but that's okay. It's it's fine. Uh, he didn't like the Dallas Cowboys very well, I bet. But he is a member inductee into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame right here in Stillwater. He's a wrestling Hall of Famer. He's Mike Golick. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm doing well. You had me reminiscing about uh, motorcades. Man, I tell you what, did I love those, being involved in those things. We would uh, – um, we didn't bust a lot. Obviously, the colleges are busting a lot now. But when I was with the Eagles, we bust up to uh, to play the Giants. And man, there's nothing like you know not even worrying about the speed limit uh, when you're in a motorcade. And then when you get off the when you fly to wherever you're going, you got the motorcade. The two biggest greatest perks I missed were were police escorts everywhere and those chartered flights for the team when basically you eat nonstop uh, for the, for basically the whole flight. So those are. Those are a couple of those things you take for granted until they're not there anymore, and all of a sudden you get pulled over when you're speeding. Yeah, and and that's a bummer. We've got Mac Butler who's retiring at the end of the year, and he's the uh, director of ops for Mike Gundy in, in Oklahoma State, and he's he's one of the best. And with Mac, trips are letter perfect, and you miss the charter because you don't have to go through the airport. You go right out on the tarmac, yeah. load and go. Uh, but now this Oklahoma State actually has the best schedule you could have for a pandemic. They've got both the Kansas schools on the road. They've got OU on the road. And then they've got Baylor and TCU in North Texas. Well, I mean, Baylor's a little central Texas. They're going to fly to Baylor. They're going to bust all the others. So they'll they'll save the university some money. And, and they're going to bust today up to uh, Lawrence, Kansas. They're leaving about 115. And they will have, you know, my best motorcade, my son played at Oklahoma State. And his and I was doing the radio when he was playing. This is back Mike Gundy's second year. We went to Shreveport, Louisiana, for the Independence Bowl, which is not played Alabama, not right. not your greatest bowl game. But the president was going to visit Shreveport like a month oh. after the bowl game. So the the motorcade, all the guys in it, they were practicing for a presidential motorcade. So they were they were unbelievable. I've never seen motorcycles move in poetry like that. And we're going through every stoplight, and man, we're breaking all kinds of speed limits. It was a great, yeah, it was a that was a great motorcade. Uh, I, I thought you were going to tell me that the president at that time was visiting then, and how crazy that would be with traffic whenever a president goes to an event. Well, that's good. That's good that they were practicing because it is it, it is some of those perks that uh, that you miss the most when all of a sudden you're out in the real world. Yeah, and I know the guys are. I think they're taking eight buses yes. uh, on their trip, so because you got to keep everybody. At least, at least the one thing, you know, the, the one thing, it, depending on where you were on the totem pole, if you were that freshman, you know, you were sitting on plane flights, you were sitting three across, and I'm yes. sure on buses, you were sitting, you know, next to one. But now, you know, with COVID, you know, you're going to get a lot of distance. That's why you have a lot of buses and spread everybody out. Oh, yeah. All week long, the big guys like uh, Tevin Jenkins on the offensive line, and I was talking to Brendan Evers, one of the defensive tackles, Said, yeah, we get we get a whole row. I mean, it's yeah. great. So, <laughs> hey, <a> little thing. <laughs> something else that's different about 2020, and this is really what I wanted to get into with you. Uh, Oklahoma State didn't play that first week in the Big 12. Tulsa asked to delay the game because of COVID 19. So I got to sit at home and watch um, all the games that day, and and I really. I like Matt Campbell, and I've got a lot of friends at Iowa State, so I was really watching that Louisiana-Iowa State game more, although I had uh, Arkansas State and K-State going and West Virginia and Eastern Kentucky. But you're doing the game, and you're doing it remotely, and you're going to do this one remotely. Tell me what that's like, because i, I got to think that's, that's different. Well, yeah, I, I would say so. Uh... And not only remotely, but the, the three of us, play-by-play analysts and sideline, are all in different spots. Now, Quinn Kessnick, he's going to be there at the stadium. Uh, I will be in the studios in uh, Bristol, Connecticut, the ESPN studios. And Dave Pash will be at his house in Arizona. So we'll be in three different spots. Dave and I can see each other. We Zoom. You know, the Zoom has one of been you know yeah, yeah. The, the thing everybody does now. And then uh, I and Dave has a set up his house, and I have monitors where I can see an all twenty-two pit framing. I have stats. You know, I, I have what I need, but it's it's just not the same. I I am one of those who follows the ball last. I like to look at everything before that 
from coverages to stances to everything. And, and, and unfortunately, TV always follows the ball. And I like to reverse it. I like to know by the time the ball is snapped, what's the coverage? Is there any twist? What's the line kind of blocking you have on the line? And I work my way back to where the ball was going. Well, that all kind of changes now. You know, I get uh, immediately at the snap, it goes to where the ball is going. So out of frame, I kind of lose the frame a little bit of some of the things that I look back. But you know what? I mean, I can sit here and I'll tell you the intricacies of this to you. And I tell other people that as well. But I, you know what? I'm not going to complain about it. It is what it is. I would love to be at the games. I'm sure we'd all love a normal life right now, but we don't have it. So when I tell you these things, I'm not complaining about them because I still get to call a college football game, but it is a little different. There is no doubt about that. And then, you know, then there's the, you know, the, 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 between the, the, the announcers, you know, that kind of rhythm and flow, you try not to step on one another because you're not, you don't get to see one another. So it has its challenges, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm calling the college games and the players get to play and the coaches get to coach. So, you know, we got to, got to count our blessings there. Yeah. And, and we're the same way. The, our radio crew before every broadcast, when we, you know, we just look at each other and say, Hey guys, we get to do another game yep. and we don't take for granted. I mean, it could be gone next week. I mean, you know, I mean, we all know that. Uh, you know, something else I, w- I was going to ask you about on on that. You mentioned the all twenty two, and and I'm kind of like you. I don't. I know Dave and John up in the booth, my partners. I know they're following the ball and doing that. So I'm looking like you. I'm looking at coverages, or I'm looking at something the fronts are doing. Kansas, for instance, with DJ Elliott, their DC. They're a um, they're mainly a four man pressure team, four man rush right. team. But our three-man front, and they send that fourth guy could be coming from anywhere. They want to change right. that up. I can tell you, all week long, Oklahoma State's offensive line has been working on zone protection, and and some of the younger guys, it's 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 a new deal for them. And so that's one thing I'm going to watch tomorrow. Where is the fourth rusher coming from for Kansas? And is Oklahoma State on the offensive line? Are they doing a smooth job of picking it up? Because you're probably going to have the freshman back at quarterback and. You certainly would like to keep people out of his face. That could be a big equalizer for a Kansas team that, that certainly is overmatched. But if they can get some pressure, maybe they can make some plays in that area. So there's one area that I'll look at. Yeah, there's a couple of young guys on that, uh, on that old line that are just getting their, their first time this year. And, and what the defense tries to do, and this is, this is what we see today, Certainly, you mix it up. Everybody's multiple. Everybody changes things up. Everybody looks like a three, has a four, has a four, will drop off. I mean, the, the, the variations of defenses now, hell, it was, it was so basic when I was playing. I mean, the verbiage was nothing. Now, now it's, it's not like it's damning like the offense is verbiage, but you, you can do a little more. And what you see a lot now is you'll see those, that defensive line. You'll, hell, you'll see five, six, sometimes seven close to the box, threatening like they're going to come. And for the most part, not all of them are. But the whole object is to confuse the offensive line, the whole object. They could end up just bringing four. But if they have confused the old line to thinking somebody else is coming, then someone's going to come free. And that's the whole idea of of a lot of the confusion defenses today. And that's what you want to do. You want to make the the old line think that they're the smartest group out there but you still want to try and overload what they have to think about because you're giving them a lot of variations before the snap. You know, being a defensive guy and, and I, that's what I played. Now, obviously not at the level you played it with Notre Dame and and then on in the NFL, but uh, I appreciate defensive football. And I think you're going to enjoy, even though the big 12 gets a bad rap and and it's been a while since Oklahoma state really had a defense like this, but I think you're going to like a lot of these guys you're going to see on, on Saturday and, the linebackers with Malcolm Rodriguez, Ayman Akban Bamiga, uh, even the backups, Devin Harper, Calvin Bundage. And then they've got – they're three deep at each of the defensive line positions. So those guys yep. are going to rotate like it's a hockey line change. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this. I, th- this is – I'm having fun watching this defense. They're, they're attacking, you know, and you're right about the Big 12, you know, because you see scores 40-something to 40-something, 40-something to 30-something, and you're like – Okay, you know, the offenses are going to score, but the defenses are going to give up points. Well, while Oklahoma State offense certainly has struggled to put up points, and, and obviously having a freshman quarterback can do that, their defense has been playing, you know, some standout football. I love the attacking. I always like uh, an attacking defense. I'm, I'm, not a, I, I'm not as much a fan of read and react, and I think that's kind of going out the gate anymore. It's kind of attack and, and kind of muck everything up 
you know, while you're attacking, kind of reestablish the line of scrimmage. If not, really control. I really kind of I like the 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 way the outside the outside contain guys for Oklahoma State use their hands. They use them very well. That's one thing that um, is a big transition from NFL to the college is hand use. So when I see kids that can use their hands really well, first thing I do is I want to I want to you know hand, give a handshake to the coach. Yeah. To coach that because you coach everybody to use their hands, but there's proper hand use, how you use hand you use, how you have leverage, and it can be a simple thing matching hands with feet. But when you know when you have outside contain, you're able to keep it. Uh, it, it stretches the play out. I've, I've noticed that while they attack well, when people try and get the corner on them, they do contain very well. So at this point, it has been a fun defense to watch. And let's be honest, you haven't been able to, from scores and at times, you haven't been able to say that a lot about the Big 12. And I know I know it gets blown out of proportion at times as well. Believe me, I do know that. But I, I agree with you. I think it's a fun defense to watch. Well, and I, I'm guessing you may have had a chance to – I don't know if you guys had a chance to talk with Jim Knowles of D.C., but he's an old yeah. Philly guy. Yep. So, uh, you know, and, and, and I've enjoyed getting to know him. I mean, we've had some good de- defensive coordinators here. And you mentioned those coaches. I'll throw out Joe Bob Clements and, and Greg Richmond are the two guys that coach up those defensive linemen, and they are both big on on uh, on hand usage and, and hand placement and doing the right things. Um, hey, before I let you go, I've got to ask you about your alma mater – um, you know, I think everybody in college football pays attention to Notre Dame. I know first time I took my son to a Notre Dame game, OSU had played up in Illinois to open the season. And so we went to a game that uh, Notre Dame and Northwestern played at Soldier Field. And actually our seats were behind the Notre Dame band. So we got to hear, you know, wake up the echoes over and over, which was okay with me. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. But what do you, th- I mean, I know you've been asked this a bunch, you got Notre Dame in a full conference schedule in the uh, ACC. I'm I'm kind of anxious to 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 see this, and I'm looking forward to maybe a Clemson Notre Dame rematch in the ACC championship game. Well, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be a rematch; it would be the first time if that were to happen. And 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 in my opinion, it'll be the only time if it happens. Notre Dame will go back to being an independent right. next year, unless some things drastically change. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this was a this was a, a win win for both Notre Dame and the ACC. Uh, you know, Notre Dame splitting their NBC money with the ACC, so everybody kind of wins in this one, and Notre Dame gets to play a full schedule as well. So they also play the beginning of November on a regular season game, so they could play twice. But listen, don't tell the U about that. They're playing well, and that bodes for a really nice game. Uh, I believe next weekend with uh, with Clemson. And Miami, Miami and Derek King, they've looked really, really good. But let me tell you, Trevor Lawrence is just different yeah. than everybody else. And that team just they reminds you of Alabama, the way they just keep reloading. You just see more freshmen coming in and playing and doing well. It's been it's really impressive. So, listen, I certainly hope for that uh, uh, matchup in the conference championship. And I, I think at this point it could be between Clemson. I think, I think they're a heavy, heavy favorite to be there, Notre Dame. And then the way Miami is playing, go. We have Miami did this a couple of years ago, and we thought it's kind of like the Texas thing. Oh, is Miami back? Is Texas back? And then, and then they get tripped up a little bit. We'll see if that's different for Miami this year because because they look good. So I like those three teams. Well, I, I can honestly tell you, and and I, I did this. We had you on before you were inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Big fan, not only of your football career, but big fan of your media career. I mean, you're. You're the guy that's fun to listen to, and sometimes people forget to try and be fun to listen to, and you never forget that. And I, I, I like that. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I just, I always like to feel like I'm sitting at the corner bar having a beer and just shooting the breeze with people. And sometimes you're serious, and sometimes you laugh. You know, so it's just, it's kind of the way I've done things, and I've been doing it for a long time. I don't, I don't see that ever changing. <laughs> Well, hey, Mike, I appreciate the time. Have a good call tomorrow with Dave, and I'll say hello to Quint. I've, I've, I've worked on the sidelines with him a bunch. He's really good. Guy, that guy dots his I's, crosses his T's, and, I mean, he's, 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 pretty, uh, he's pretty focused in when he's doing a ball game. But, uh, hey, have a good call, and I appreciate you coming on. All right, no problem. Thank you. All right, Mike Golick from ESPN. He'll do the game. From uh, up in studio in Bristol, and like he said, Dave Pash will be in uh, Arizona.